Another way that we can use the equilibrium constant is the following. If we know the initial values for the concentrations of the reactants and products, and if we know the equilibrium constant for the system, then we can use these together to find the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and the products. In order to do this, you will again need our ice table. In many situations, we'll also need the quadratic equation. The main difference in using the ice table in this case is that we do not know any of the equilibrium concentrations. We also do not know any of the change amounts for the ice table. When we don't know a value, we use the value x as a substitute. So in those situations when you're using an ice table and you are given the value of an equilibrium constant, you will need to use x in the change rows for those situations. In this example problem, we are given the equilibrium equation 2a is in equilibrium with 3b and 1c. We're given also at the start of the problem the concentration of 2a initially, and we're going to assume that since the reaction has not started yet, we have zero amounts of b and c. Since k is given in this situation, and we don't know how much the reactants and products change by, we use x for the amount that c is going to change. For the amount that b changes, since it's in a 3 to 1 ratio, we use 3x in the change row. And for a, since it has a 2 for the coefficient, we know that a changes by 2x. In order to find the equilibrium values, we simply take the initial value plus the change value to get the equilibrium values. Let's see if we could use what we just learned to solve the following problem. For this system, we have the reaction of PCl5 decomposing to form PCl3 and chlorine gas. We're also given the K sub P value of 0.497 at a temperature of 500 Kelvin. Furthermore, we're given that the initial pressure of PCl5 is 1.66 atmospheres we're asked to determine what the equilibrium pressures of all three gases will be. Since we are not given the initial pressures of PCl3 and Cl2, we could assume that those initial pressures are zero. The first thing we want to do is set up our ice table and tabulate the given values. So we have 1.66 as the initial pressure of PCl5 and zero for the initial pressures of PCl3 and Cl2. Next, we'll want to determine the values for the change row. Since we're given the value of k in this problem, we know we're going to need to use x in the change row. In this situation, the coefficients for the products and reactants are all 1. So for PCl5, it'll change by negative x. For PCl3, it'll change by positive x. And for Cl2, it'll also change by positive x. We can now add the initial and the change values to get the equilibrium values in the ice table. For PCl5, this will be 1.66 minus x. For PCl3, this will be x. And for Cl2, this will also be a value of x. Now we can write the equilibrium constant expression and plug in the equilibrium values that we just determined. The equilibrium constant expression for this system is the pressure of PCl3 multiplied by the pressure of Cl2 divided by the pressure of PCl5. When we plug in the equilibrium values, we have x times x in the numerator and 1.66 minus x in the denominator. And since we're given the equilibrium constant in this problem, we can set those equal to 0 0.497. Now that we've established the equilibrium constant expression is equal to the equilibrium constant, we can rearrange the equation to solve for x. When we do this and set the equation equal to 0, we get x squared plus 0.497x minus 0 0.825 equals 0. This is essentially a polynomial expression, and we can use the quadratic equation to solve for x. 
I'm not going to solve a quadratic equation in this example, but you should be able to do that on a programmable calculator, or you could find a quadratic solver on the internet. When we solve for x, we get two values, 0 0.693 or negative 1.19. We know that negative 1.19 cannot be the value of x, because that would give us a negative value for the equilibrium pressure of PCL3 and Cl2. Since x is now 0 0.693, we can plug those values into what we know for the equilibrium pressures and then calculate their values. For PCL3 and Cl2, their pressures will simply be 0 0.693 atmospheres. For PCL5, its equilibrium pressure will be 1.66 minus 0 0.693 or 0 0.967 atmospheres. By now, you should be able to identify when to use x in ice tables. You should also be able to use ice tables to find equilibrium concentrations when the equilibrium constant and initial concentrations are provided.